lovelies, welcome back to our channel, Get Spooky Society. We are back at Randolph County Asylum and Infirmary to surprise Shauna for her 30th birthday as a gift from her husband. She thinks she's coming here just to do a tour of the asylum. She has no idea that Get Spooky is here to investigate with her. So it's time to Get Spooky. Shauna? Yes? It's time to get spooky. Right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Happy birthday! Oh my god, dear! You're wonderful. Your husband did this for you. No way! Oh my gosh! This is so cool! Oh my god, I'm so excited! So I'm crying. She knew all about it. to something like this my entire life like I am so, so thrilled this oh, is so yes. amazing <laughs> and we're really excited yes. to be a part of it well it is good to that meet you wonderful. I actually think I saw one of your videos online so my husband must have like trying to give me little hints <laughs> because he showed me some videos and you know I've seen some people that look exactly like you so I'm pretty sure it's you because yeah. I was sending him links and I said okay because he emailed me and asked if we were the ones that had um, investigated here and I said, Well, yeah, we have a couple times. Oh and where gosh. is he? I thought he was coming in with you. No, he's with the kids, right? Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's stayed with the kids. He's not gonna be here at all. No, 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 oh, no. I know, but we have oh, a yes. three year old and then two older kids, so we had to make sure baby was okay. Mm -hmm. He's super attached to me, so it was hard to leave. Oh, <laughs> but I'm excited because this is gonna be so fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, cool. the building that you're in is the third asylum to be built here in Randolph County. The first was built on this foundation. It was built in 1851. It was a wooden building, candlelight, oil lamp light, wood stove for cooking and heating. There's no electricity back then. And in 1855, it burned to the ground. There were 19 residents in there at that time. So everybody made it out okay. But the county funds and is responsible for these places. So the county now has 19 homeless people that they didn't need to get back under a roof. So they built a second asylum on the other side of the driveway up there. And they were trying to get it up fast, and they were trying to get it up cheap, so they fired the bricks on site. We have clay mix here, so it's perfect material for making bricks. But they were in such a rush that they didn't fire the bricks long enough or hot enough to develop a protected place. So basically, as soon as they had the building up, it started melting the weather. There are records from the late 1880s showing women on the west side of the building using bed clothes and pillows to put holes in the walls and to hold the windows in place. The county commissioners at that time couldn't be bothered to come out and look at this place to fix it. They are responsible for the maintenance. But they ran into a little bit of a problem because these are run by county people for county people who have family that live in the county who are rightfully very upset at the conditions their family members are living in. So in 1895, the commissioners were finally forced to do something. But rather than come and look at the building and determine what needed to be fixed, they did what politicians today do. They threw money in that general direction and hoped it would shut everyone up. So in 1895, they hired a contractor to come out and install a brand new invention in the basement. A flushing toilet. Very exciting stuff. So the contractor comes out, he runs the, the he installs the toilet, he runs a drain line from the building all the way back through the woods and empties it into the creek that's back there. 1896 rolls around. Another problem has arisen. Well, they could find someone who knew how to install a toilet in the mid-1890s. They couldn't find anyone who knew how to fix one. So 1896, the commissioners were forced to come out and look at this building. And they arrived to find holes in the walls, windows falling out, and 18 inches of raw sewage in the basement. Because the main, line, main drain line had broken. So they have people living and breathing, living and cooking above this oh, disgusting oh. mess. So at that point, they had to decide whether they were going to try to save that building or build a new one. And they obviously opted to build a new one. To save money, cheap is going to come up a lot in this conversation throughout this building. Cheap, they shored up the 1851 foundation and extended it and built the building that you're in today. Are you serious? Oh, so you will see part of the foundation that is original to 1851 downstairs. Okay, that's cool. Wow. That is pretty cool. 
Yes. <laughs> so this building opened in late December of 1899. The residents crossed away, simply packed up their belongings, came over here, picked a room, and settled in. From 1899 until 2006, when the place closed, there were 1,487 people that called this place home. That includes the superintendents and the families. Some of the residents were here for the majority of their lives, and others were here for just periods of months. Because I know people hear the word asylum and think of a madhouse. The word asylum here is for people who are seeking asylum. The chronically ill, the mentally handicapped, physically handicapped, and the desperately poor. So those are the people who would find residence rooms here at the asylum. The area of the building that we're in now, anywhere you find carpet, is the superintendents. The whole front of the building, from the basement to the attic, superintendent section. This is public space here, uh, where family members can come in and visit their residence. You'll find, number one, the room's not big enough for a family gathering, and number two, this place is segregated by gender. So no men in the women's hall, and no men on the women, uh, no men on the women's hall, and no women on the men's hall. There we go, we got it out the way right that time. Okay? So the superintendents have private quarters on the second floor. They live here. Now the superintendents were not doctors, they are managers running a 350 acre farm and making sure everyone here is provided with clothing, food, and medical attention as needed. There were doctors on contract throughout the county who paid house calls out here when they were required. So they didn't actually have like a living doctor? That, no. Oh my goodness, that's no. crazy. So I assume that they didn't know what to do with a lot of the residents if something happened and he couldn't get it out here, he or she? In, in a lot of cases, um, the doctors were very prompt about getting out here. And as I said, they had several on call, so if one wasn't available, they had others that they could help and come out and take care of things. So, um, there were some people who were admitted that they didn't know what to do with, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the basement. See the concrete changes color? Yes. There's a channel that leads to the drain, right? Um, and that's because where you're standing, there was a small cell down here in the basement. We talked upstairs about people who they didn't know what to do with. Are you for real? Oh. So they have a small cell down here, and if someone was admitted who had schizophrenia or some other kind of mental disorder that made them violent to themselves or to others, they're not equipped to handle that here. So they would bring them down to the small cell, and with that window in the landing, the superintendents can keep an eye on them. They'd call the state police to come pick them up to take them to the facility in either Richmond or Muncie, where they could receive treatment. Really? So we don't have any records of anybody being down here for more than just a few hours before the police arrived to take them, but this was part of the history of this place. Wow. It did happen. Now, if two were admitted at the same time, would have the same kind of problems, do you want to put them in together? No. Number two did not receive his luxurious accommodation. You see the bolt here broken off? Oh my gosh. Oh the they had manacles. Are you serious? And the second person would be manacled until the police. Oh my goodness. Women and children ended up in here. Oh. And because of the numbers of people coming in, a lot of men in the upstairs floor gave up their rooms to come down here to the basement so the women and children would be both right. Oh, that's right. So that's our first exception to this. Arrive. Oh my Hello, Ida. <laughs> because that's our next room. The other, ex another exception to the basement being all our resident spaces is this room. Is this Ida's room? This is Ida's room. It is. This is the only room oh, in the man. asylum with bars on the window, and you're familiar with Ida's story, then. Yes. Uh, do you yeah. know Ida's story? Yes. I, I told do, her. honey. You told me. I'm going to so. go ahead and put out some equipment just in case Ida wants to talk to us. Okay. okay. I will get out of your way so you can do this because I'm not. I feel really uneasy in here. You're not Ted. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she does not feel like she does not like our historian at all. Scared, um, kind of her uh, anxious. So do you want to just go ahead and tell a little bit? Sure. About Ida. So Ida was admitted in 1936. Her husband had died six years before that of neurosyphilis. Apparently, he was a very friendly traveling salesman who brought home a present to his wife. Oh, yeah. Nice guy. So her husband dies. 
Ida is slowly losing her mind oh. after he passed. Neurosyphilis just kind yeah. of destroys you. Yes. Um, her family had been taking care of her by 1936. They just couldn't do it anymore, so they admitted her here to the asylum. Her room, when she first was admitted, was on the women's side of the building on the second floor. 1938 rolls around, and her condition had slipped to a point where she'd come out of her room screaming, scratching at herself, pulling at her hair, tearing at her clothes, defecating in strange places. It's a 350-acre working farm. It's a dangerous place to be if you're not fully cognizant of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And the people here are local people. It's run by local people. So they know Ida, they care about her, and they just, they didn't have the heart to send her to a mental institution. Right. Terrible places in the 1930s. So the solution they came up with was to move her down here to the basement. They moved all her belongings down here. And with the bars on the window, they could be sure that she couldn't get out at night. And every night at 10 o'clock, they'd come down, they'd lock the door go to bed, get up at five o'clock the next morning, open the door and let her out. During the day, they can keep an eye on her and at night, they're sure she's safe. So they were doing this all of 1938 up until August. And one night when Mrs. Thornburg came down to tell Ida good night, Ida asked her for a broom. Well, it's a basement. So she brought her broom, told her good night and headed to bed. And when she came down in the morning at five o'clock to open the door and let Ida out, she found in the night Ida had taken that broom and some of the ticking off of her mattress and it hanged herself. That's so sad. Mm -hmm. That was so sad. Yeah. So spouse. Spouse. Yeah. Aww. Dirty bugger. Right? <laughs> We're sorry, Ida. Yeah. Very sorry. And if you want to talk to us, you can turn on one of these flashlights or touch one of these one of these shiny balls. were never used as residence spaces. They were typically medical rooms, but in this case, it happens to be a workshop. One of the residents who was here was here in the 1930s. His name was Walter Armstrong. I think today we consider Walter low-functioning autistic. He had sensory issues, obsessive compulsive disorder, antisocial behavior. He liked to spend time down here in the workshop. One of the things that he liked to do was spend his time doing things like this. Here on the workshop bench, and over here, oh, wow. and up this board. So people have captured SLS footage of Walter here by the board, banging more nails in. So Walter is known to frequent this room, and he likes to open and shut the door and scare the crap out of people, too. <laughs> All right, well, I hope he does that more here. <laughs> we well, usually get um, flashlight and cat ball activity in here. Walter, are you here with us? Can you turn on one of these flashlights? Usually we're here at the wee hours of the morning. We came later this time, or afternoon this time. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to tell us? Walter, my name is Stephanie, and this is Dale. I'm Shauna, and this is my mom, Linda. Capo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's flashing. I'm sure that you remember us. We've been here multiple times. We have, Walter. Oh, I got something. You do? Yeah, it's right next to you. Is that this? No, nope, it's other opposite, side. yeah. Yep. It's as, as tall as you. Now, it's opposite direction on there. So if it looks like it's on this side of me, then it's probably... See it? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's next to the workbench, right? No, it's going to no, be on the other side. This side. Yep, that side. Yep, your, oh, hand, your hand's oh, up. Okay, I see it now. You're making it duck. Mm-hmm. My hand's shaking. I hope I hit record, did I? Yes, I did. Good. It's Can you touch my hand? Oh. It went away. Awesome! Yeah. Thank you, Walter. That was awesome. That was really That's cool. where we got them the last time. Yeah. Not the last time, but the first time we were here. So I said there were three spaces in the basement that were used as residence spaces. 
This here is the third exception. Are you serious? What? And I'll explain after. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and do our prayer that we didn't do because we were so excited for Shauna's birthday. Okay. Heavenly Father, please wrap us in your white light. Shelter us from all evil. We do not allow any evil into this building or into our circle. We do not allow any evil or any entity at all, spirit or otherwise, to attach itself to us or any of our equipment. You must stay here. We come with all due respect and in peace. We just want to talk to you, keep your story and history alive with Kate and anything else you want to tell Kim. Kim, anything else you want to tell us today? Amen. 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 So this space here is the third exception to the basement being used as residence spaces. Across there, that's the furnished room. And this space has to do with that. If you look on the wall here, you can see that there is a very well-defined A. But if you do an etching of the rest of it, it actually says Anthony 06 here on the wall. And in 1906, a gentleman named Anthony Davis was admitted to the asylum. He was an African-American gentleman, and when he was admitted, he decided he wanted to take on a job here at the asylum. If you were a resident here, you could take on a job. You were not required to do so. A lot of residents did it because, number one, it kills time, and because a lot of them used the experiences they gained here on the farm and inside the building to help them get employment Trees. on the outside. Trees. You're speaking of the outside and it says trees. trees. <laughs> so, so cool. Anthony is one of the residents who took on a job, and the job Anthony chose to do was to make sure that the furnace and the water heater were kept stocked with coal. And rather than spend all his time running up and down the stairs checking the furnace and the water heater, Anthony actually made his bunk down here in the basement. Now, at no point in this place's history was it ever segregated by race, only by gender. Uh, okay, okay. That's a very small space for yeah, somebody to be in. Enough for a cot. Yes. That's no amazing. privacy. Was there a door yes. or anything that he had? He may have had a curtain hung at that point. Okay. Oh. And I know the space across the hall that matches this one was a restroom area, and there are like saloon doors over it, so there may have been doors there at that period of time, yeah. but that's 100 years ago, so it's hard to tell. Right. Yes, right. Oh, this is a cool area. Oh, wow. Hold on tight to that. <laughs> That is the dinner bell because we are in the men's dining room. So that bell rang five times a day every day this place was open for wake up, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and lights out. Okay. Every day. The area we're in is the men's dining room. This yeah. is where all the men would gather to take their meals. Sean, I think I'm going to put it down just for a second so I'll take pictures. Yep. Let's see if you so the men on the first floor and the second floor each have their own chapels and have their own day rooms. So there's not really a whole lot of need for the men to mingle between the floors so during the day to start working on the farm, except at meal times. And then every man came down here to eat together. Oh, yes. Wow. She's got, she's got something on the ceiling. Oh my gosh. I've heard about something on the ceiling. A crawl? Yes. <laughs> Does it look like it has more than four limbs? Um, it looks like a spider kind of or something. I don't know. It's like freaking out. Uh -huh. The crawler. The crawler's kind of octopus looking. Okay. Well, I think that's what's on here right now. It's just hanging out on the ceiling. Probably like watching us. So oh, it's yeah. on this, so it's actually over here. Oh my gosh. I'm going to take a picture of this thing. I can't touch it. Do it. So the creeper, some people call it a crawler, mm -hmm. other people call it an element. You gonna go in there? Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, I got something up here on the ceiling again. Oh, yes, you do. I can't get my phone up. There we go. It looks like a person. They're like kicking their leg. Is it over here again, Dale, or is it over here? It's over here on the side of this pipe, like in between these pipes. I think that would be, right? Yeah. Sorry. 
Oh, is there multiples? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, oh there my is! Gosh, there are. Yep. Oh my god. Goose. What? Goose. Goose? <laughs> it better not goose us. <laughs> goose me! Was it telling me to do something? I don't know. It might have been. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no. Don't be good. <laughs> oh, goodness. They're just hanging out there. The oh, one thing so doesn't look odd. like a human like figure. It looks very creepy. At first, it looked like it was dancing. I'm going to go in. I'm going in. Wow. Yeah, that's normally what they look like. It's Am kind of like a little, little dancing figure. Oh, wow. No, it's, it's on the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, it's the it's like towards tower. us, like right above us, right here. Is that where it would be, right? Which is yeah, I'm trying to figure out where that light is up there. Is it going to be real? It's opposite of whatever it shows on there. So. Oh, I see what you're saying. So is it maybe over here further? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in between these pipes because that's what I see in the video, is these pipes, right? That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, the long pipes that are running. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much centered between these oh, two. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah, there, there are, are two. There's one. another one. One's big and one's smaller. And that one would be... And he's like on one pipe and I think he he's got a light on, on, on like one pipe and a light right. on the other pipe. Yeah. So he's over here. Remember. Oh. What do you want us to remember? Just the fact that they were here. That's so cool. Can you go in the kitchen with us? So glad you joined us. Absolutely. We've missed you. We have missed you, Doris. Can you turn one of those torches back on? I have some in the cooler in here as well. And some shiny toy balls. You can wander around touching anything. Nothing will hurt you. Doris, Shauna came. Oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you turn it back off? Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, yes. Doris, Shauna and her mom, Linda, came here to spend her birthday with you. Talking to you and hearing about all the stuff you did in this kitchen. I wonder if she made like birthday cakes for people and stuff on their birthdays. I don't know. 
know. But that would be really cool. Was it Ted that told us that she was a better cook than his mom? Ted's really? one of the other historians. Mm -hmm. That she was a better cook than his mom, and I forget. Was it like a green bean casserole or something? It was green bean. Yep, yeah, it was. Y'all, I love green bean casserole. Because my mom makes that too. Yes, yes. I make that too. I guess yeah. everyone's mom makes that. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's one of my favorite Thanksgiving games. That's like why yes, I'm yes. looking forward to Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Cooking time. Doris, are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> she knows we're talking about her green bean casserole. Can you turn it off, please? Thank you, Doris. We took Doris when she turned 22, left the asylum. Oh, really? To go out into the world and make her way. And within the year, she readmitted herself oh, to the asylum. She really liked it here. She said, This place was home, oh. and here she was making a difference. Oh. Oh. Wow. That's wow. sweet. She looks so wow. sweet. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. This, this, is, this is who Doris is. That's awesome. Wow. So, is this the women's? This is the women's dining room. So oh, we're all going okay. inside the building now. Okay. Okay. The place is segregated by them. So the women were on this side of the building. The laundry room at the end of the hall. All the residents here did their own laundry. Oh, really? Okay, so there's a laundry room at the end of the hall, and I said that's you know kind of typical for what we have in basements today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This room's one for history lovers. Okay. So if you come in here and you look on this wall, you can see the window building. Right? Mm -hmm. And the corner over there, you guys see the door that's filled in? Yes. Okay? Check out the keystone of the door. Uh, uh, yes. Do you know what I'm see. talking about? Yes. The top. The, top. At the center of the arch. Yes. Okay. There's a letter up there. It's actually a Mason's. Oh, it is. Mason's. The Freemasons? The Freemasons. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Wow. Yep. Oh, so, wow. What you're looking at here is the original exterior of the 1851 Asylum's foundation. Oh, my And the Masons gosh. were involved in the building of that first asylum. Oh, you can see it really easily because this is limestone here, so 1851, and then behind wow. us we have brick, right. 1899. Wow. This is where the extension begins. Okay. Now, that door leads into what we call the meat room. Now, there's a gray building behind the asylum. That's a slaughterhouse. They raise livestock here. They kill them. They ate them. 350 acre working farm. This place is self sufficient. Right. So they would kill them in the slaughterhouse, cut them into halves and quarters, and then they would be carried into the 1851 asylum through that door. Wow. Okay. And next door is where they finish the butchering process. So in 1851, this was the original butcher block. It's one of the very few artifacts that remains from the original asylum. That's amazing. Wow. So this is the butcher block they used in 1850, 1899. And you can see on the walls where they had not places to hang up knives and saws. They came to the butcher. So you bring in your pig. Cut it up into four chops, wrap them in paper, they go into freeze. Okay. But this gets called the meat room for another reason. And that's because in the late 1920s here in Randolph County, there was a cholera epidemic. Now, do you know anything about cholera? Yes, I know it's a disease that would kill you. <laughs> so it's, it's primarily a summer disease, and if you get it from drinking water, this is contaminated by pig poo. Okay. So it's an intestinal problem that you have, it's bacterial. It has a 40% mortality rate, and it's very fast acting. Like you'll wake up in the morning and find you're fine, and then you're dead by dinner. Oh, it's bad. Oh my gosh. So they have a cholera epidemic ongoing here in Randolph County, and only three undertakers covering the whole county. They can't keep up with the body count because they had the cholera victims and then you've got Uncle Joe who died of a heart attack, you know? Yes. They, they can't keep up. So they made an arrangement with the county commissioners and the superintendents and ambulance services that any overflow of bodies they couldn't handle were brought to the asylum. They were brought to this room and they were stacked up along the wall between these two doors. Flashlight stuff. Which one? Right here. Right on the, on the on shelf. The shelf. No. We got a lot of SLS activity on that shelf last time we were here. Okay, let me turn that up. So the three undertakers here in the county pulled their money to bring an embalming table out here to the asylum. And when they had time, they'd come here to this room, they would embalm the bodies in this room, they would wrap them in paper and put them in the freezer with the pork chops. What? Cholera yeah. is that really? So that's probably the best thing they could have done with them. But we had a pile of bodies stewing in the summer heat down here, which is a serious problem. Yes. During 
that period of time they were using this as a morgue. There were three elderly women here at the asylum who passed away. And the county tried to say that they got the food poisoning. The problem with that story is they all eat the same food. So it's not going to be three people. It's going to be 30. Yes, all the people were, almost all of them. Exactly. Yes, right. We are on the women's side of the building. All three women that passed were in their, they were elderly women. So they have compromised immune systems because they're older. Yes. And they have to walk past this pile of bodies to go eat and to go back to their rooms. So they picked their collar, they died of collar, and the county tried to cover it up. Um, the families found out what was going on. They got a hold of the newspapers, came out, took photos out here of uh, bodies stacked up to, oh, about here. Nice and light. That, that. Okay. And that brought an end to this room being used as a makeshift morgue. And they brought 18 inches of concrete to the basement here at the asylum. So all that contagion is sealed beneath our feet. Really? And the SLS on the camera. Oh, flashlight. Hi, can you turn that off, please? Can you turn that torch off? Free, please. We can ask you some questions if you turn it off. Thank you. Pants. Pants? Yep, I'm wearing pants. Are you canning? I see canning as a as a home industry. Are you canning in here and putting your cans on the shelf? Can you turn that back on, please? Thank you. Awesome. Can you turn it off? Phone. Phone? I am holding a phone. Oh, my gosh. Is this you, Doris? Are you the one putting the cans on the shelf? Can you turn that flashlight back on? Seat. Seat? There's lots of seats. you want me to take a seat? Okay. I'll take a seat. Thank you. Can another, you turn it off? Another flashlight. Where? That one? Yeah. Okay, so both of them now? Yep. Awesome. Do we have more than Doris here? We do? Thank you, Doris. Can you turn that off, please? I have chills over my entire body right now. Mm -hmm. And it's not because it's cold. <laughs> Thank it's, you. This room is crazy active. Yeah. Um, Angie went in there and shut herself in there by herself. And what did it say? Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. No way. On the ghost tube. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, you did. Can you turn that off? Both lights. Can you turn them both off? That's amazing how they're able to do that. I know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So what they actually do is they connect the wires on the inside. They're not twisting them on and off. Some people think, oh, they're twisting. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're connecting the wires on the inside. Is that right? That's amazing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's so cool. I can't see the other one. It's very, off. very dim. Yeah, yeah, it keeps like flashing. Yeah. I see it a little bit. Can you go towards that red light back here in the back? It'll let us know you're here as well. Last time Dale and I were here, there was five spirits in here with us. Can you turn on the torch if there's five of you in here? Yes. There is? Okay, can you turn it off? Please turn it off. Thank you. Are there more than five? Can you turn the torch back on if there's more than five? Okay, I hear a belly. That's me, sorry. <laughs> Dale's belly growls when he when spirits are around. Oh. <laughs> Is Amy in here? Oh wow, that was fast. That might have been too fast. It might have been. Can you turn that back off, please? Please turn it off. Thank you. Is Amy here with us? Can you turn the torch on if Amy is in here with us? No? What about Doris? Are you in here? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. she's already said she was. Yeah. 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 Okay, she wants to talk then. No. Oh, oh yeah, she made it really bright. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Doris. I think Dale's hungry. You might need some food. <laughs> <laughs> Can you whip me up some green bean casserole? <laughs> Chairs. That was me. Yeah, it's picking up that chair. Should I move it? No. Doris? Can you turn that flashlight off, Doris? Pretty please. I am taking my own pictures while I'm sitting outside. Turn it off. Thank you. Doris, did you follow us down here from the kitchen? Can you turn the flashlight on and the torch on if you followed us down here from the kitchen? Thank you. That was bright. Thank you, Doris. Do you have any questions for her, Shauna? I do not. Linda, you do, do you have any questions for her? No, I don't either. Um, well, Doris, we're wondering if maybe you'll come to the attic. Yeah, we haven't been to the attic yet. Mm -hmm. Are you doing a catering a party up there? It said attic. It did. It's <laughs> crazy. Um, we're wondering if we can move on and we'll talk to you up in your doll room. Is that okay? Can you turn on the flashlight if that's okay for her? The torch, if that's okay? If we go upstairs? Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris. That's awesome. It's like freaking out. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. It's, it's not me. No, um, I don't. It could be you. Back Could it be? Back away. Let her let her move away from. Can you go like go this way? I don't think so. Look, that's something else. Then maybe Is it's it trying to connect growing? to you, but it's on the table. I don't really know. That odd shape. I'm not sure what that is. Is that well, the... remember oh, that? there's something sitting in the chair right now. <laughs> yeah, it actually, could be the chair. Really? Yeah, but Sometimes. she wasn't moving it, and it just all of a sudden appeared? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's sitting in the chair, whatever it is. With, and its, some... with its hands on the table. Really? Yeah. Now yes. it just got up. And, that black chair. and there's something else on the top of the table that looks like not human. She is not moving that thing, so there's no way her moving it is making it do that. That's crazy. I mean, it could be the shape of the chair, but I'm not... It's not acting like it is. But you said it got like, up. Put it on that chair. Like, on this one over here? And see what happens with the shape of that chair. No, it's not doing it. It's whatever's on the, on the table staying on the table. Well, we got something on the table the last time we were But there. whatever was in the chair, we lost it when I moved it. Did Kate say she was running for the house? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, let's see if I move like this. See, look. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, see, they used to do embalming and stuff and butchering and stuff, so. Whatever it is, is likes the table. Mm hmm Well, that's consistent with the last time we were here. Mm -hmm. The history of these places goes back to the 1820s and the writing of the state constitution. There's a clause in there that says every county will establish a county home to care for poor and indigent people to do the work of Christ. Oh. It's in our state constitution, so a lot of county homes here in Indiana are shaped like the cross, and it's because really? of the wording of the constitution. That's amazing, yeah. actually. Yes. Really, it, it is. is. So, yeah. we are on the women's side of the building. When the place was first opened, it was not segregated by gender. If you came in as a family, you stayed together as a family. The rooms on this side of the building are about eight feet deeper than they are on the men's side of the building. And that's because these were intended for families coming in. Oh, well, that's good, though. Then when they began segregating, this became the women's side of the building because the children up to a certain age stayed with mom. Right. Right. And yes, they did separate married couples. That's wow. so sad. <laughs> that is sad. So these are the rooms that they would be. That's not really good. Hi, um, Noah. Hi, Noah. Hi, Noah. I didn't say Noah. 
upside down room. I said, no love. I know. Well, I heard no love. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so this room belonged to a little boy named Noah. He was admitted in 1943 during World War II. Dad was deployed overseas, and he and his mother ended up homeless. They came here. Aww. Noah was eight years old when he came here with his mom. He contracted measles, and he passed away here at the asylum. Aww. This was his room. And Noah likes things that light up and make noise. <laughs> We hope he does. He's a very playful spirit most days. Yes. But you're new and everyone else here seems to like you, so maybe Noah wants to play too. No, I hope so, Noah. We are in a room with a slanted wall again. This is a medical room, and this is the room that Doris passed away in. Aww. The last couple of months she was alive, she had pneumonia, and she did not want to go to the local hospital for treatment, so they brought her to the medical room here on the first floor. When she was admitted, she asked for the doll collection to come in here with her. So the dolls that are on the bottom shelf, they belong to Doris. Are you serious? Oh, They're really hers? Really? They were really wow. hers. Wow. The others have been added by people that I recall, repeat offenders, and <laughs> my boss who tries to find dolls specifically to mess with people that don't like dolls. Mm -hmm. um, so this was not Doris' residence room. This is the room that she did pass away in. I Aww. see. Okay. Well, this is an amazing collection. Yes. Here. It keeps growing. Mm -hmm. Should have brought her a doll. Inside. Yes, we're inside. <laughs> I will leave you. Laver, Laverne, maybe? I have this doll at home. Oh, Laverne, yeah, like the I name? I thought you did. Yeah. Oh my God. Do you want to try to get the, um, when they are finished taking pictures, get that bottom row mm -hmm. so that we know for sure that was where Doris is? That's cool because you know what? I actually think I have a doll just like that one at home. Yeah. It looks just yeah. like her. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes. They're really old too. Um, yeah. My husband's grandmother gave them to our daughter, like a huge collection of them. Oh, yeah. the flashlight. The flashlight. Yeah. On the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it Thank you, Dora. Ooh, whoa, whoa, that Can't was fall. me. That was me. <laughs> Thank you. Grave. <gasps> Doris, are you buried out back? Use. Use. Doris, um, we're going to continue our tour. Thank you for turning on that torch and for talking to us. But we want to come back and play with your dolls with you a little bit later. Is that okay? Okay, I think that came through the first time we were here. What did it say? Raul. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Do we have somebody named Raul following us around? Mm -hmm. Can you turn on that torch one more time? You've been doing a lot for us, so we want to give you a break and let you rest, okay? And we'll come back. Thank you, Dora. Yes, we're going to disappear. Oh my, that's crazy. Dishes. <laughs> Dishes. I didn't see the last. Early. <gasps> she, did she did dishes. dishes. Did you do the dishes early? Like in the morning? That's usually when I do my dishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Oh. Doris, we're going to give you a break and let you rest up. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Doris. And this room tells the story of why the asylum is segregated by gender. Actually, it's this wall that tells that story. We have cheap plywood. The walls in this building are stone, except this wall. So in 1914, a young lady named Lulu Woods was admitted to the asylum with her stepfather. Don't know her mom was, but she's Lulu with the stepdad. At that point, if you came in as a family, you stayed together as a family. So Lulu and the stepdad had a room together, and Lulu became pregnant. She's 14 years old. Stepdad went to jail, and Lulu gave birth to the first child she had out here at the asylum. She was in and out of here seven times over the course of her life. The first time she was here, she was here for about seven years. And during that period of time, she gave birth to two more children. Forgive. 
Oh. Oh, well, it's not your fault, honey. It's not. No, it's not. Oh. Something happened, whether it was the rape, giving birth, something happened inside Lulu and it made her very vulnerable to men and a victim of men, quite literally, the rest of her life. Oh, that's so sad. So she has three illegitimate children and they took out this wall to create a nursery for Lulu and the babies. Oh. Before she was discharged, the state declared her incompetent to take care of them, took the kids away, and sent them to the local orphanage. That's terrible. Oh, now, all three kids got adopted by the same family out of Muncie, and that family, very unusually, kept in contact with Lulu. Wow. So the kids grew up knowing their mother. That's, That's good, though. Yeah, That's very, very good. Very good. And, and as I said, very unusual for very that time period. Yes. Yeah. So, Lulu is in and out of here another six times. She dies at the age of 56, and her death certificate reveals she continued to be victimized by men because she died of a massive heart attack. But at the time of her death, she had heavy vaginal bleeding and bruising. She is buried in the Potter's Field at Fountain Park Cemetery here in Winchester. Under the name Lulu Schultz. So that was purchased from the Randolph County Sheriff's Department in 1940 and installed here in the medical room on the men's side of the building's second floor. This is cool. And every medical room did have toilet facilities in there so they could move the toilet facilities into the cell. That cell was used. They held court up in the attic with the judge presiding. Do we don't know what his name was? The most oh. we've got has been William. Haven't found a last name yet. What There's like know? five of them in the books. Sounds familiar. John right. was 83 or 82 so years old in 1943 when the troublemakers were here. And he's 82 years old. He's a crotchety old man, so he doesn't appreciate the shenanigans very much. And anytime he heard about anything they might be plotting, he'd go around the corner to the judge who lived right next door, or the superintendent, who's, you know, catty corner from here, and let him know what was going on, which obviously didn't win him any friends, but he's an old man, he doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. right. September 1943 rolls around his fall house cleaning time. Yeah, back when we still did that. <laughs> and uh, every resident is supposed to clean the room, they're supposed to wash the windows inside and out. Mr. Chance, 82 years old, he is not going to be climbing the ladder to wash the outside of the window, but he's supposed to do it, so how do you get it done? Ask somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Chance's solution was to open the window, sit on the sill, close oh, the window gosh. over his lap. And wash the window from the outside. Are you kidding me? No, we actually thought that was a good idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You've been doing it for years. Fall and spring house cleaning. You've been doing it that way for years. And uh, that was going fine until two people came in here, opened the window, and dropped him off the side. Now, again, I can't prove it to you because Mr. Champ died at the Randolph County Hospital of an accidental fall. <clears throat> wow. Oh, shit. That's so sad. But what I do have is the family of Mr. Studi, the superintendent, who have his diary. And his diary said he'd spent the morning at the big, big barn. And it was getting to be lunchtime, so he was coming across the grounds, and he says, I saw Champ fall, and I saw two people walk away from the window. So you tell me what happened. Um, if somebody had been in here helping him, and he'd fallen, I don't think they'd be walking away from a window. This end of the attic is where the judge would hold court. So they would gather witnesses and get a jury together, and they'd sentence people to days, hours, weeks in the cell. Oh my God. For us. Just for residents here? For residents here. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, that's interesting. Enough. People have said that they have seen the judge up here, both behind this post here and leaning against the chimney, because this was the courtroom up here. So, people say that he's still up here looking and judging. Kind of creepy. That bothers me more than by anything else in the building. I thought that someone's judging me. Hey lovelies, that wraps up another episode of the Got Spooky Society and our tour of the asylum. Happy birthday, Shauna. We were so excited to spend it with you and your mom. Next, we'll have the investigation that we were able to do with Shauna and her mom after Kate's tour. Until next time, stay spooky.